and welcome <laughs> to the first episode ever of Reckless Roleplay, where the uh, the wonderful all stars of Reckless Comedy are going to play Dungeons and Dragons together for the first time ever. This is going to be a very accessible intro to this game, and we're going to all tell a story together. It's going to be so much fun. My name is Kyle Moore. And my name is Brad Norman. And uh, yeah, we're going to get started straight away. you guys and you can just tell us what character you're playing on this adventure. I'll go first. I'll be playing a wrongly accused Minotaur barbarian named Milwaukee Milkweed. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> My character is a Goliath who desperately wants to be a rogue even though he may not be quite so successful at that and his name is Nart. Nart. Mm -hmm. Is that G-N-A-R-T? N-A-R-T. Just N-A-R-T. Just N-A-R-T. Right, two minutes. We're two already minutes. really getting yeah. into the important questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I am a turtle. Mm -hmm. Druid. Which is a turtle folk, sort of a half Yeah, half like a turtle. humanoid mm -hmm. turtle. Mm -hmm. um, and I am Princess Donatella Tortuga. Oh. <laughs> and I'm from the Koiman Islands. Oh. Oh. I'm playing number 26. I'm a changeling, so I can shape shift. I come from a long line of tailors. A lot of bad stuff happened in my family. I have no purpose. What's gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, uh, playing a human warlock. I'm looking for vengeance, and my name is Ivan Lightfield. Oh. I am playing a seven year old Asimar boy, cleric of life, and he is. Uh, he is named Brick. For you guys uh, watching, uh, you can watch our episode zero uh, that you'll get a little more information. It's almost a prologue of what happened to these characters before we begin. But right now, I will ask for the lights to be lowered. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and right now, Ivan, you're standing in your farmhouse. Pretty quickly, you realize you are dreaming, perhaps a, a lucid dream. You start to relive the terrible thing that happened to your family, and you see the army of black cloaks, of gray skin, skull masked beans march into your town. This uh, emotionless massacre that happened in front of you. You see them throw green fireballs out of their hands, and, and your entire village set into green flames. You see the little boy in golden armor who came into your village not too long ago with his little golden wings do his best to fend off some of these creatures and you see him head down the road towards the school that he knows to protect it. You re-see everything. You see these monsters drag you out into the fields away from your family where all you can hear is your family's screams. You blink and you see again a black figure coming into your house weeks after this, weeks after you haven't eaten. You see yourself shake his hand. And then something strange happens. This being looks from you on the ground shaking his hand to you who's watching. And when you look at his face, it kind of, if you can imagine black and gray swirling light in a, in a body shape. And then a, a human face kind of emerges from that. And it kind of switches from a smile to a frown to a scared face. It's made many, many faces at once. Uh, but eventually one kind of holds still and he simply says, um, Hey! Oh, Ivan, I am so excited about this little journey we're gonna have about our, our pact, about our agreement, me and you. We're gonna do some wonderful things and I swear to you, Ivan, I will hold my agreement. You're gonna get this guy. I'm gonna march you to his doorstep and you're gonna burn him with the same fire that he burned everything you love. And when you look down at your hand, you see a green fire circle around your hand. It says, I've given you what you need to get to him, but that's all I can get into right now. Seems you found yourself in a bit of a predicament. So uh, I'll see you later every night in your nightmares <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about it. Any questions? Will I be able to find my daughter, Emily? Well, that's not really the deal we made. I kind of told you I'd help you kill the guy who <laughs> burned your daughter. That's uh, that's a whole other uh, a whole other guy you got to talk about. That, right? We good? Sure. Great. You should probably wake up. And you do. And 
and you're on a boat. There's wood panels around you. It's dark, it's dank, it's smelly. There's a lantern not too far away from you uh, outside of the cell that you're in, and the lantern kind of reflects your shadow. In that shadow is his face. He kind of gives you one of these and a little (laughs) wink. Yeah. He says, I'll be watching. You kind of turn, and you see all of these folks. Yeah, so uh, basically you're woken by the sounds of thunder and lightning, okay? And you all wake up, you find yourself taken prisoner in a large iron cage. You're all locked together in the iron cage of the belly of a large wooden ship. Uh, Now there's a few things you notice right away. Uh, One is that this is a windowless prison. You cannot see outside of the hull of the ship. Um, Two is that there's this sort of like gentle, like rattling and jiggling of all things. It's not just that you get the feel that you're on sort of a sea vessel, but also that there's just some sort of like low tremors going on, just so sort of gently rattling everything around you. And you can hear a humming as if some great machine is going full tilt boogie, like somewhere nearby. So you're, you're locked in this cage and you're in the depths of this ship. And as your eyes adjust the light, you can kind of see more of what's going on around you. Um, to your right, at the end of the room, you can see there's a, a large vault door. It's a very ornate door. It looks like it's got like a three-pronged, like sort of special like lock and key system on it uh, that you don't fully understand, but it looks pretty important. Uh, to your left is like pretty much what you'd see as a normal door. And then across the room for you, from you, you can see two more cages. One's rather small, like something like a dog kennel. And inside of it, is what you can really only kind of make out as a a gnome. And he's sort of curled up into a ball, like into a fetal position. He looks like he has recently been to the butt kicking train. He's wearing welding goggles and they're cracked and crooked on his head. And he looks broken and bleeding and he's barely moving at all. In fact, you you notice that, that his pockets are sort of like getting jiggled around. And you can see that there's a couple of rats trying to get at what is probably bread in his pockets or something like that. Just to, the, to one side, uh, I guess that would be to the right of, uh, of this uh, little guy's cage is one more cage. It's actually uh, uh, kind of twice as big. It's covered with a canvas tarp. And you can't really make out what's inside of it because it's dark in there, but you can hear what sounds like <sighs> almost like a mourning animal. If you had to guess, you would say that it sounded like some sort of large feline type thing. You can only make out sort of a black shape laying on its side. And again, if you didn't know any better, you'd say this thing was moaning, like it was either in pain or really ill. So uh, I'm gonna give you a chance to sort of become lucid in this cage together here as players. I've never been behind bars before. What's going on? Yeah, it's not fun. Uh, Yeah, this is the second prison I've been a part of now at this point. Um, but it's gonna be okay. Oh, so we're gonna be okay. I'm you sure said, we're gonna be. Fine. You got out, so we're gonna get out. I mean, I, yeah. You're just, really big. Yeah, I get that a lot. Wow. You're yeah. stuck in here with a baby and a criminal. <gasps> Are you okay, buddy? What was the last thing y'all remembered before I was getting here? On I, the I, rock, which is this really big prison, there was this huge spear. Came out of nowhere. <sighs> Some gas. I saw a spear as well. I also had a spear. <gasps> You're beautiful. Thank you. But I also had a spear. I was, I was at my party. And then it just came down and it killed everybody. <gasps> or I don't know what happened Did to it them. kill your mom and dad? I don't know. Spear hit me too. Oh, God. <laughs> spear come down fast. I was robbing, got caught. So uh, I thought it was a weird way to get to prison. Okay. If we are surrounded with criminals, does anyone know how to pick a lock or get out of a cage ah, or... I might be able to help you. If I can figure out that you're not going to kill me once we get released from this. I am it's not like a, a criminal. 240. Uh, I might be able to help too. What? Be unlocked thing. Your hands sneak, are huge. Sneak around. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> sneak around, maybe uh, I can hide you guys under my cloak. Get you us out of here one by one, what do you say? Can you break that lock? I can see what I can do. 
So as you approach the lock on the, oh, on the cage, uh, yeah, here's a map of Sorry. where you guys are. You're locked in this cage here. And as you approach the lock on this cage, there's only one door. It's a, it's a giant silver lock. It's actually, you, you know, as a Goliath, you're kind of big, but it seems like a size lock that you would use on a door in the, your normal day to day. Right. Uh, it seems silver plated and it's got a couple of different like sort of like ornate engraved symbols on it. Okay. It doesn't look like language as much as it looks like decoration. You're welcome to try picking the lock if you wish, but it does look like a pretty special lock. Yeah, Nart never seen door like this before, uh, but Nart will try. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shot, Nart. I guess I could just hit that. Oh. Wow. 17. So 17, so you think you did a really great job, but something almost like magically repels your your hand back. And also, you don't have your tools, so you're kind of doing this like by hand. With my thick yeah, thumbs. you're kind of like, a, I mean, don't have my stick, but I try with my finger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, little Great boy, thing. if I snap off one of your fingers, I could try again. That's probably the best option we have right now. That's a horrible idea. Your finger's tinier than Nard fingers. Well, I have other things we can we can use other than my finger, if that would be okay, because I think that that would hurt. I mean, I would is I want finger, but you do what you want to do. I think that would be ouchy. All of your gear is in uh, are, is across from you in bags. Oh, Even sick. my horn. Even your horn. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah your, I your, always have my horn. Uh, yeah, you guys your were stripped horn, of your gear and your weapons. It's all stacked very neatly. You can see it across the room. It's right in it, like just to the left of where the gnome is caged up. So you don't really have your stuff. On. You. Yeah, I've seen a lot of cages. I don't think this one's busting, guys. <laughs> what if yeah. that gnome over there ain't gnome? As the gnome kind of hears you and starts to adjust, the door swings open. Not the metal one, but the wooden one. And a large steel and steam apparatus starts clumping through where you guys are at. Let's take it, a look. It looks humanoid. It's about six and a half feet tall. Um, it's, uh, it, it looks like it's put together with you know, steam pipes and like kettle iron. Um, and if you look really closely, you can see that it's got some sort of like serial number on it. B00M3R. This is a very old unit, very uh, outdated in its way of thinking. It kind of thinks, you know, everyone around it is lazy and should have a house by now. It kind of just starts <laughs> stomping through the middle of your cages uh, heading toward the metal metal door. Right across the room, just sentry style. Is, excuse me, us. sir? And it is ignoring you. Uh, yeah. it, it continues to go and it reaches out, it puts three of its fingers into the hole and the door uh, slides open. Can we come with you? <laughs> it's still ignoring you. Uh, Dobbin, number 26 is the closest to that door, so what I want to do is you roll a perception check. Mm-hmm. So you're uh, able to glance in and and see what's inside there, and and only uh, uh, you will have this information. But you see lots of, of goodies and goldies and magical trinkets. You're a man of cloth and armor, and you mm -hmm. see lots of lovelies. Just a couple of ornate hilts sticking out of nowhere. And, and you see him kind of uh, take the bag that was in his hand and place it on a shelf, and he just backs up. The door closes behind him. He trudges back through uh, the middle of you guys and out the door as if you never even existed. So we got to get out of here. I suggest following him. If anyone see inside that room? Uh, it's just like a storage unit. But um, <laughs> as long as we get out, I think that's our best course of exit. Hey, who are you guys? And you look over and the little gnome in the cage has woken up. He's got no, broken, sorry. broken, uh, like welder's goggles. He's got big black eye. Mm -hmm. Oh man, they really messed me up. Who are you guys? We just woke up here. I, I, I know Yeah, we're gonna ask you the same thing. Yeah. Did you see anything? Do you yeah. know how you got here? I, I work know. here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, uh, I help on the engine, me and my brothers. We, we were hired. They, they said they were going to take good care of our families. And, and they, all they got to do is worry about the engine. And, and, and for a while, you know, they were, they were scooping up bad guys. I, I thought gee, there was bad guys, you know, big, big scary monsters and weird looking turtle people, you know. These... We're not bad guys. I'm not a bad guy. No, we're not a bad guy. I'm a good boy. I, I do bad for my things. Things. And I had a few drinks the other night, and I stumbled down here, and I saw this little baby laying in a, you know, this little kid in, the, in a cage, and I asked them about it, and they roughed me up, and then they put me in here. What baby? This baby? 
Well, you're a child. You know, you look what like baby? a. You, you, you're the baby. I'm the baby. You're the baby. I seen. Oh, so he was here before the rest of us. No, you was all here, but I, I, I but I, I didn't see him before. I, I was okay with with all you being in here, but then when I saw that, I thought maybe this is this is no good, and I spoke up, and that I should have never so, spoke up. So who who is your boss? Who do you work for? Well, I don't know who I work for, but, but the captain of this ship is Captain Gnarl. Not, not Captain. No, he said Gnarl. 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 Is that a name Gnarl. that we Gnarl. Is that yeah, a name okay. we remember? I know, I don't think any of you have, so. have, have come across, across this captain. Uh, but, the, but then the, this guy goes, oh, look, uh, my name's Larry, and look, we're in trouble. These are not good guys. I mean, Gnarl's pretty bad, but the thing that's with him is even worse. And right on cue, the door swings open again. And coming down the stairs, very slowly, is a barefooted mannish being in a black robe with gray skin <gasps> and a skeleton face. And he kind of stands in the middle of the room, staring at you. And as he stands there, you hear the voice of Captain Gnarl. You see this gnome come down the stairs behind this uh, skull-faced man. As he starts to sing, he starts to sing this this little like haunting little sea shanty it goes uh it goes yo ho yo ho what's a man know about them rattle bones oh no oh no they serve the king of the shadow throne yo ho yo ho if they find you out late on your own oh no oh no you might end up the next rattle bones and rattle bones is kind of just staring at you guys he's got a big uh coffin on his uh back and uh He's very creepy looking. If you kind of want to know generally what he looks like, you could probably look behind you right now. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's what is this it, the same skeleton mask as what was in his story? Ivan, you do recognize this character as, as one of many yeah. uh, things that that ravaged you and that you uh, that Brick had tried to fight off. It's one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. One and the same, and he's he's standing there. And but the the captain takes his yeah. his lead. The captain sort of like takes the room. I mean, he's again he's a gnome. He's about you know three and a half feet tall. You know he's wearing this like horned captain's helmet, and uh, he's wearing like this uh, double-breasted leather coat. And instead of an eye patch, he's got a pocket watch artificed into his eye socket. A gold pocket watch that is popped open, and he seems very pleased with himself. However, he is going straight for the cage where our little gnome friend is uh, entrapped. And, um, and he goes, uh, bring him out. And uh, down the stairs comes that uh, the automatron you had seen before, or, or steam, you know, bruiser. Uh, Boomer, as we'll call him. And uh, in each of Boomer's palms uh, are the heads of two gnomes that look very much like your new friend, Larry. Yeah. He has uh, his brothers in his palms. He's and dangling them like they're just dangling in his in his hands like he's palming basketballs. He's got one gnome in each hand in this automaton's hand. And Larry says, "You put my brothers down, you you big you idiot." Now then, um, <clears throat> now there's been a bit of a problem with the engine, Lerald, and it seems that your brothers here wouldn't continue working on it until they came down to see you. So I obliged. Why well, you, you, you let me out of this cage and and then I'll, I'll I'll go fix the engine, okay? Well, I wish I could trust you, Larry, but <laughs> your brothers here have other things in mind. So I'm going to give ye a choice and skip all the captain dramatics, just this once. I'm going to give you ten seconds to agree to fix the ship and follow my orders for the rest of your days, or I might have Boomer take out one of your brothers here. You have 10 seconds starting now. Wait, we'll help him. I, will, I, I don't want to speak for everybody else, but I will help I will help Larry. And in return, you set them free after. You know how to fix a, a steam engine? I can help. And we hear ding. Oops, too slow. Okay, and Boomer. Boomer crushes the skull. 
of one of Larry's no! brothers. You just see him slowly go, No, I've never known love! <laughs> and, and, his, uh, uh, and Larry Larry screams. The body falls, and his other brother, Crackle, uh, the remaining gnome, yes, dangling in the hands of the robot. He says, uh, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do whatever you say, okay? I, I can do it, just let me go fix the thing. And uh, Boomer throws him down, and he, he scrambles up the stairs to go start working on the engine. And, you know, the captain follows him up as he's going. He's like, finally, a gnome that knows his place on my crew. Uh, Wait, I don't think you're aware of this, but you're in the presence of a princess. It's true. And I am not, I am not associated with any of these people. So if <laughs> we're here for a crime, I did not commit one. And I don't know why I'm here. And I would like some answers pretty immediately. Well, I'd love to give you some answers, uh, your majesty. <laughs> but uh, you're all just cargo, okay? So just keep it at that. Now, just as he's explaining that, you guys hear this enormous boom, this huge explosion, and the ship jerks to one side. And this, the captain almost stumbles a little bit, and he's like, now if you excuse me, there's a bit more pressing matters going on with this ship right now. Larry is just, I'm gonna kill him! Yeah. I'm gonna kill him! All right, you, you guys, you, you bad news crew, you gotta help me kill this guy. If I get you out of these cages, you gotta help me out. We're taking this ship. You in or no? Yes, we're in, yes. Well, Everyone. Yeah. What do you need? Oh, we can work time. together. Yeah. I need my tools or my brother's tools. Yeah, you guys can see from where you're at that actually the dead gnome still has a tool belt on. Um, like he still has all of his gear, so uh, you know you know that if you can get those tools to Larry, that he might be able to get you out of this cage. I can talk to animals, right? And there's rats. There are a couple of rats down there. Yes, they. <laughs> Larry's like kind of like shucked him out of out of his pants, but they're still around. You can talk to this thing. He kind of picks up one of the rats. Oh, yeah. Careful! Yes, yes, yes. So then you would cast. Uh, you would click uh, your cast. Uh, speak with animals. Speak with animals. As soon as you kind of concentrate on this rat, it kind of trips up and says, "Hello." What's his name? What what rat's it? Um. Can you tell this guy to put me down? This is very uncomfortable. Okay, please put. Him down. He doesn't have consent. He Please said, put him oh, down. Okay, okay, sorry. Tell him I said sorry. He said sorry. Okay, um, tell him I, I said I forgive him. Uh, okay, he forgives you. Okay, um, tell me, is there anything I can do to make him feel more comfortable in my cage? Is there anything that that he can do to make you more comfortable? I'm so sorry. Can we, can we just... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, yes. sorry, sir. So. Mr. Rat, sir. Uh-huh. We need the tools that are on the floor out there. Would you be able to pick them up and just bring them into the cage? Oh, yeah. Us? No, I could probably... I, I could handle that. What's in it for me? Well... You were trying to get that bread earlier. I'm sure our friend Larry will give you the bread that was in his pocket. Right, Larry? He wants my bread? Okay, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah, I'll trade the bread for the keys. Or uh, from, from my lockpick, or rather, you know, and Wait, so... you the... understand what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so the, the, the rat, don't worry, I got this. And he kind of scurries out to the side through the walls, and you kind of see him come up through another uh, floorboard. And he digs through the pockets. And, okay, what am I looking for? What tools do we need? Oh, uh, it's uh, a little black pouch. We just need the whole pouch. So the rat, uh, he does, he, he's able to kind of gnarl this little pouch out of the pocket of this headless gnome. <laughs> and uh, kind of oh. he kind of yeah. pushes it, drags it through this hole in the floorboards, comes back the way he came. Larry makes a uh, quick work of the lock. It drops out of his cage. He uh, rolls over to, uh, to to your cage. He he locks it. You see kind of uh, these these light and blue kind of runes drop down and kind of seep back into the lock as the lock hits the ground. And he kind of he, he picked it pretty clean too. Mm -hmm. uh, and so your your door uh, swings open. <gasps> mm -hmm. Mr. Wright, thank you so much. Oh, thank gnome you. guy. Um, can you pick the other lock, the metal door, or just a random question? This door? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, that, I can't. Uh, that's that only thing, uh, that, that big, stupid uh, robot bruiser thing. Uh, that's the only thing that opens that door. Yeah. We need robot arm. Mm. Got it. We need that. Uh, what about the, what about the cat? Do you guys want to check out the Larry. other cage? Yeah, yeah, we might need all the help we can get. So now that you're out of the cage, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, raise the, the house lights here. 
Uh, really. You know of this creature. You've, you've, you've read about it or you're, uh, you've seen it on maybe a uh, vacation or adventure, uh, but it's called a displacer beast. Mm -hmm. it a is displacer a, beast? It is a very dangerous uh, monstrosity. However, this one's not so dangerous right at the moment. It looks really sick and really pregnant. Oh, oh no. Is it... Are, are they hurt because they were hurt or because they're... It's malnourished. It hasn't eaten. It hasn't drinking water. Yeah. It's, it's dying. It's been mistreated. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah, it is injured mm -hmm. uh, internally, externally, and is pregnant. Your gear is to the left uh, of them. There's six of you. You actually see seven bags. Is, what is this thing... What, are, what did you call it? It's a displacer, displacer beast. Displacer beast? Is that an animal or a beast? Well, it's a monster. It's a six-legged panther. Yeah, so you're, but, but for the sake of your speak to animals, no, you, you do not understand okay. what it okay. is. Just yes. moaning. Rick will run to his bottle, run over to his pack, and grab some um, pan au chocolates he's had in there for a while, and he will come bring them back and try to feed it to the displacer beast. And what, they're chocolates? Chocolates? Yeah, it's like a croissant with little chocolate bits on the inside. <laughs> the, the animal does not... Uh, seem to, uh, to to want to eat uh, the, the pastry. Uh, oh, just, I, Ivan will take that and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Dart was also reaching for it and it gets really mad. I'll have another one. That'd be great. I'm, ugh, I'm so hungry. Boom! The ship shakes again. Uh, we need you uh, all to roll a constitution check. Oh, no. Oh no. <laughs> Damn. Three. Thirteen? Eleven. Oh, All right. Anything under ten will fall due to the uh, shaking of the ship and, and take. What? Two the damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, the five. We took a wide stance. Mm -hmm. yes. Two damage. Mm -hmm. so everything is here. falling. Good. Okay. Yep. Two damage. Yep. And that steady humming that you were hearing beforehand has now like turned into the rhythmic whining almost. You know, like if it was like beforehand now it's like <laughs> and Larry says uh, this is not good uh, look we I gotta get up there I gotta fix that engine and you guys gotta kill Gnarl and we we, we gotta get we, we gotta take this ship now or, or, we're, or we're going or we're going down does anybody know how to drive the ship yes I can drive the ship okay, okay great so okay. go how do we well, I, I can't go out there alone. I need you guys. You're my okay. team. We're like a, are you I've never always wanted to Larry? be part of a super team. This is like, we're like a team, and I'm like the leader of the team. Okay, you're right. You're right. How do we get out of here? That's what we're asking. Well, that, that door, the, 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 the regular door, it, that leads right up to, to the deck of the ship. But I mean, he, Gnarl he, and his he, men are out he's there. He's indicating the door that you saw the captain and the robot sort of exit out to. Um, and as you get a little closer to it, you can see it's it's marked in Gnomish, but even Larry like points up at it and says, Main deck! This is the door to the main deck! <laughs> <laughs> Lord suggests that we be super sneaky. Maybe you, you should go first if you're sneaky. Lord will sneak up. Try to take Captain from behind. Mm. Okay, that's not a bad idea. That's great. I you like listen that. to that, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, a, that's, a, that's the plan. Well, I can yeah. actually help you if you're a good fighter. I can make you invisible for a while. Well, well uh, Nart is good on his own. He appreciates help. <laughs> I'll take some invisibility if you're offering it. <laughs> but, uh, I think we should go to the person who's going to do the most attacking. So make Nart no see. I can also oh. do some damage. I knew it. Yeah, I knew okay. the words got it. I love the reluctant minotaur. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'll bust some heads. Yeah. Yeah, we that's... need to know the layout probably once we leave and how we get there and how many people we're up against. Oh, I, I, I can help you with that. Um, that's Larry the gnome. He starts going through the pockets of his dead brother. You know, it's possible that one of you guys injured yourselves just now, uh, slipping in his gore. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, but Thank he does you. find uh, a little piece of parchment that shows you a very simple, like, map of the ship. So, Nart. Yes? There's probably someone at the wheel. That's the person you start killing. Me kill guy at wheel. Boom! <laughs> Another explosion in the ship. And Larry so, says, come on, guys, figure yeah, out a we, plan. We well, get up there. Can we follow, let's follow the gnome. Okay. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's get go. the invisibility going, and we follow behind. We all can stay hidden probably better than he can. Sure. How big is your what invisibility bubble? You don't can think that's sneaky? It's just one creature that I, uh, I touch. He becomes invisible. All right, let's that's go. That's enough. 
Yeah, Wait, if we're behind Nart and he's invisible, <laughs> we're behind nothing. <laughs> but no one will expect him when he becomes uninvisible. So That's now right. it's a they will come at surprise us. Surprise attack. And then they will, <laughs> oh, and then they'll just hit him. Yeah. Nart, lead the charge. <laughs> okay. Just so you know, when I've seen this done before, if you hit anybody, it goes away. Right. Thank you, oh. small boy. <laughs> Brick has picked up his gear, and uh, Tortuga has picked up her gear. I would like to pick up my gear. That's great. And grab my gear. Yeah, great gear. And there's still a seventh bag. I will grab the seventh bag. What's what's the side of it? I don't know. We have things to worry about. No, no, no. Open the seventh bag. What's strange for these guys there? Okay, okay. Number 26. This guy's sneaky. I'm just trying to pull up the slack. For someone trying to deceive us, you are very obvious. So you show everyone what you show everyone what's in it. Okay. Yeah, uh, so in it is uh, three vials. There is a, a green one, which is a potion of health. There is a red one, which is a potion of fire breathing. Mm. And there's a white one, which is a potion of feather fall. Yeah, it kind wow. of looks like all the milk. <laughs> so he's on the wheel, we said. Mary, Mary you, you don't know. You haven't peeked your head. No one's peeked out yet. Okay. So yeah. have you guys moved into the that, out of that door oh, yet? Yeah. Is, is, is this strange? The only thing. Should we reconsider who should take the invisibility to go out and get take a look? Uh. What do you Aren't think? No need invisibility, but we'll take invisibility if necessary. Also, just we need a good communicator to return to tell us what they see. So I'm wondering if Nard, you should. You think Nard not talk good? <laughs> <laughs> Nard, it's like nothing personal. It's just we just we think mad. you're wonderful. <laughs> we want to save your skills for the time where it matters. This is not a skilled mission. You, and I will gladly do this for you. Call it, princess. Would you? I can do Would that. Would you do it? Yes. So you three go. Yeah, we'll stay here. Okay, great. Can I get that red potion? Ah! <laughs> 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 Okay, well, whoever wants to go up, the first step is going to be opening that door. door. Okay, let's peek and open the door. Great. Who would like to peek out? Oh. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, I got it. I got it. Okay. I'm going to open the door. All right, Milwaukee, you're going to peek, so roll a stealth check. Okay. Uh, 21. <laughs> 21. Uh, 21. So you're you're totally <laughs> able to, to quietly creak it. It doesn't make a sound. You, you you look out there on the deck. You see a pirate ship. You also see something strange. You see clouds. <gasps> we are in the air. Yeah. Oh. You guys are gonna want to see this. <laughs> <laughs> this flying ship. Uh, you also see uh, feet uh, running around. You see uh, it, on this deck of the ship, it kind of there's two stairs, like one over there and one over there that go up to the next deck level, uh, but in front of you, you see it probably at least uh, three sky pirates uh, running around, trying, like, freaking out about, uh, it's raining, They're all lightning. Can yeah. I roll to see if I recognize any of them from my thievery travels? <laughs> sure. Heck yeah, Nard. An 11. 11? You, you don't, Rick, by their feet, you don't recognize any of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never seen those feet. Never seen those feet. <laughs> Strange man, you turn Nart invisible. We sneak up on men. You a distraction? We take them from behind. Which man? Do this all the time. Okay, not yes. Main we... man, scary man. One with mask? Yes. Do we see him? From this angle, if you guys can can kind of see it, I know you're okay. not all up here yet, but you've come out of this kind of compartment and yeah. you see these three guys running around. Okay. And I, I, then I you think know that the, there's yes. stairs. I think the best thing to do would be to pick them up and throw them overboard so that you don't make noise, they don't, then they just don't know that they're there. There's no dead bodies. And in your head, uh, Ivan, you hear, yeah, throw them, kill them. <laughs> you're, you're, the, you're the strongest person, so you pick them up and you throw them overboard. And no one's going to You're the sneakiest person, first and foremost. But Nark will try throw a man overboard, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Larry, are, are, are all these guys bad? Like, I, I thought uh, we just needed Captain Norm. I've been out here for a while. They, they they gather up people like you, and they they take them somewhere. I I, I don't know where they, they take them. I don't care if they're good or bad. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. We did a little <laughs> rash here. I don't know if you guys know, but I have certain abilities. Um, I can turn into the captain and boss people around. But <gasps> Tell if you kill the captain, more. make sure you don't kill the me captain. Because that would defeat the whole purpose. Okay, <laughs> can you maybe turn your socks purple or something so we know? Oh yeah, yeah you've got I got different socks. 
There, I think you forgot something in the cage. So, is what? that something that we want to do? I'll take the potions with me just for safety. I have a real quick DM question. Are you guys all in the stairway having this conversation? Yeah. 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 We're okay. Cool. cool. We're, we're, cool. No one, we don't know. Yes, yeah, so we doing. all. So we're kind of right behind where we are in that picture. I think. All right. All right. And who said the least so far? Uh, I want to probably say uh, Milwaukee has. So I want you to roll a, pra- a, pa- a passive perception check, please. Okay. What's your perception? Oh, that's exactly yeah, what yeah, you rolled. Okay. It's 15. Okay, that's good enough. You actually notice that uh, there's one uh, painting. There's this painting of Gnarl looking like super buff. It's really like an egotistic, an egotistic dream. Okay. And uh, the, the painting's actually slightly ajar, and you can see that there's like a little opening in the wall behind the painting. Hey guys, do you, do you guys see this? I was telling you, this is weird artwork. Look at this. Gnarled yeah, okay. handsome, So yeah. when you pull it out of the way, you, there's there's a there's a, a large, it looks like a, almost like a, a wine cask inside of it. But the the, the liquid inside of it is uh, sort of like almost entirely clear. It's uh, a little cloudy, but it's almost entirely clear. Does anyone know okay, you found my stash. <laughs> Larry, <laughs> what is this? That is the gnome most powerful gnome shine you'd ever drink. One sip of that, you're gonna be on your floor, Minotaur. You're gonna, it's, it's, you'll be on your ass. Yeah. Is, is, we should probably just drink some of that because we're all gonna die on this ship. <laughs> so, wait, we're just gonna get drunk from this? Uh, takes it and takes a swing. <laughs> <laughs> no! All right, yes! <laughs> uh, so, roll a constitution. Yeah, roll a constitution. 16. <laughs> That's good. So the heart takes a swig, and you sucker. you almost instantly feel a, a real good. Buzz. Yeah, you're real good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, not feeling great, guys. Not, 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 not ready to go. Narte now. Narte now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and, and you guys could tell that at first Nart was like sort of fighting it back, and now he's like feeling nice and lucid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I haven't had a drink in 10 years. I think I'm going I'm to try some. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it's the right time to break <laughs> <your heart. laughs> I have a better idea. If you can shapeshift into one of the crew members, why don't you go offer a drink to some of these crew members? We can get them drunk, get them to fall asleep, and then they can take over the ship. Boom! Everybody roll a decept- or, uh, de- dexterity check, please. Five. Okay. One. Oh, one. Oh. Straight oh, dex. No. Oh, yeah. No. So this one. hits. Gnar so hard and he just took a huge yeah. shot of that <laughs> like and he falls back out of the door onto oh. the deck slides across the deck in the middle of the deck mm-hmm. two of the pirates look over see him and yell they're out they're out yeah everybody roll initiative <laughs> Yeah, so when you guys come out onto the deck here, you can see there's a platform behind you um, because the top of the ship from the side kind of goes like this. Okay, it's like like a little top hat. And on top of that higher deck in, in near the back of it, near the back of the ship is the wheel. Uh, Captain Gnarl is at the wheel. He is trying desperately to keep this ship in the air. You can see Boomer. Boomer has spotted you. This enormous steam whistle starts to steam as he as he sees you. One of you guys, at least one of you guys, will be able to see Rattlebones, the skull-faced man, as well as some other like pirates on the main deck here. Do we see how we're staying up in the air? The uh, side there? The side are giant uh, fans. Turbine oh, engines. Fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who has all of the potions right now? Number twenty. <laughs> I have all the potions. It's actually um, Milwaukee is uh, Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee's turn. gonna go first. Yeah, oh. you got you got first right. dibs on this combat here. You can choose one of these pirates to attack. You can try to get to one of these stairs. Um, you know, you can try to you know whatever you want to do. And uh, how these work is your your movement is what thirty feet. Each one of these squares right. is five feet. So uh, so you can move six squares essentially. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go straight for that first pirate to the left. This guy here? Yep. Okay. 14? 14 would hit. I'll do it. Nice. Take that. <laughs> and then I got uh, 12 damage. I'm going to sweep the leg. 
mm-hmm. and then smack him in the chest. Okay, so you sweep the leg with your hammer, and you go down and smack him on the chest, and you see his entire rib cage. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> <cave> <laughs> God, I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah, and uh, then <laughs> one pirate is. I told uh, you this guy killed her. <laughs> it's for you guys. I did it for you. That was a lot. That guy didn't. That guy didn't have a chance. You haven't struck me as the kind of guy that would do that thus far. Well, prison changes you. <laughs> <laughs> and so these uh, these other uh, sky pirates were like, Law, Bill! <laughs> yeah. No, you Yarr. killed Bill, you son of a bitch! <laughs> they charge at you. One of them hits you with a nine. Hmm? Has that hit your AC? Yeah, what's your AC? 14. Okay, no, then he misses. He, he doesn't, but the other one who has tears in his eyes and says, Bill! Oh. And he runs up and stabs you and gets a natural 20. Yeah. Oh my God. He, is, he oh rolled my a, God. a critical uh, hit. Yeah. Him and Bill were lovers. Uh, <laughs> for 18 damage. 18 damage. Oh, no. yeah. okay. what? What? So this guy, after you just crush his friend, stabs you in the back and you fall down and you're starting to bleed out. Uh, you're, you're, you're at you're at zero. I mean, you're not dead, but you're at zero. Should have been more sneaky. <laughs> You hear the pirate like like almost twist the, the sword into you from behind, and he's like, "How's that for sliced beef?" Oh. Oh. The other one is perched right up here, uh, kind of on the stair, and he uh, aims his his crossbow down at the turtle, and uh, he would not hit. That's a nine, and you have a very tough shell, right? right? So yeah. he shoots a crossbow bolt and it bounces off your shell. Cute. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of cute. It is kind of cute. Meanwhile, it, here comes Boomer, uh, comes down the stairs, mm-hmm. and he uh, lands right right here. Okay, Boomer. And he looks at you guys. Next up in the order is Nart. Let's go, Nart. Hey, face change, face change boy, you throw me bottle. You throw me green one. Uh, uh, uh. Ah. Wasn't that healing? Uh, yeah. So we would say okay. that actually is probably interact with an object. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that counts as like my. That would count as your. I mean, we'll, we'll give it to you. Like you're all so close together. Are you trying to yeah. pour it down your buddy's throat here? Yeah. Is it? That's the idea. Then yeah. That's yeah. your action. Okay. He throws you the bottle. Pour it down the gullet of your buddy. Come back for one d ten. Seven. Okay. Perfect. So you have seven hit points. Nice. nice so nice. you're conscious again. You're. Wakey, wakey, Minotaur man. Oh, we yeah, still got yeah. fighting to do. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, and now uh, Ivan wonderful. is up. So I'm gonna use the Eldritch Blast. Which one's which one's you? Which one's Ivan? Um, right next to me. Uh, yeah, okay. Ivan's yeah. right here, and this is you. Where is and oh? You got a pirate here. You got Boomer here. You got a pirate here. I go for Boomer. Twenty-five. Ooh. Oh, okay. right, so yeah, yeah, you do it. You definitely shoot a, a blast of, of shadows out of your hand, and uh, and roll that one d10. Just click right next to it. Three. And Boomer kind of takes the head. And, yeah. And looks at you. And just, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Wait, what is your Eldritch blast? Number like? twenty-six. Yeah, Number twenty-six. Uh, I'm gonna take my short bow. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna shoot that guy. This guy? Crossbow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. What'd you get? I got natural, natural 20. 20. Nice! Oh, oh great. So you look down your thing, you shoot a nice fire, and then now just roll that uh, damage. And you can roll it twice and add those two numbers together. Nine correct. Plus. You hit this guy with your short bow so hard that not only does he go flying back, but he like somersaults and just goes like right off the side of the ship. Like, you know, like that. Ah! So he's like gone. He's out of the picture. You and I look it. around like, I. Yeah. Even with the wind and the rain whipping around, you just dead shot at this guy yeah. like right off the stair bed. <laughs> do you want to move or? Um, yeah, you can do, You can move around if you want. Yeah, I'm going to try to go down the stairs towards uh, Crossbone. So the captain, now that you have, have approached that thing, the Captain Naro sees your head poke over the stairs. Mm-hmm. And he's like, God, they got out. And uh, he's got one hand on the, on the wheel. And he turns back with a pirate's pistol. Okay. You know, he starts taking some some shots at you. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's actually got a barrel full of pistols, like sitting next to him. Oh, yeah. oh, they're all single oh, shot. Really? And you know, and again, he's a gnome, so he's standing on a box and steering the ship. So he takes uh, he takes two shots at you. He misses. What a fourteen hit your AC? I have a thirteen. 
Yes. Mm. So, oh. so it just grazes you. The, the first Thank one's gonna come through you, and then uh, the other one's an 18 plus three. So he takes two shots at you, and you're gonna take a, a total of seven damage. Yeah, and he's like, one for you and one for your mother. <laughs> uh, I'm not doing very well. I have one more uh, hit point. No. Oh, no. oh, you're gonna need some help. Yeah. You see rattle bones staring you down. Oh, he's right God. there. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Please, that's why I should come back. I, don't, I think the plan should have been to try to kill all the people in our area. Well, thanks area. for telling me that now. <laughs> he actually moves back away from That'd you. Be yeah, he that's actually... Right. Run, yeah. Bonesy. And what he does, though, as he moves, he pulls a chain and the coffin on his back falls open and bones scatter across the deck. And now is where he's standing uh, a little more in the safety. He starts muttering and moving his fingers and uh, the bones are starting to literally rattle on the ground. A little help, please. Let's take care of these other people. We're screwed. Next up is um, Brick. Okay. Is there anywhere up there for Brick to hide? Take cover? You could maybe duck back into where you came. Okay. Right um, here. So on these two sides, you see log-shaped cannons with giant spears hanging off of them. Mm-hmm. You recognize these as the spears that imprisoned you in the first place. Oh. Mm-hmm. Those big old spears that are there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, so what Brick is going to do is he's going to take out his little horn. And go... <laughs> And he's gonna cast Bless on the three closest party members. Okay. So that means Ivan. Ivan, Nart, and Milwaukee. Yeah. No sneeze. Sneeze? Bless you. Bless, you said bless you to him. (laughs) When you make an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends, you can roll a d4 and add that number to your attack attack roll or saving throw. So you see magical little, um, like almost, almost transparent, but still visible, rainbow magic coming out of his horn as he's casting bless upon you three and he's gonna waddle his way over to go duck behind princess (laughs) then say to number 26 oh you little barley herd i will help you hang on little boy help me (laughs) (laughs) so larry has popped out of the hole oh Oh, larry thank goodness larry uh he runs by you guys and says i got this son of a bitch and he shoves a screwdriver uh straight into the heart of of boomer and you see that it 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 definitely did something larry knows this thing enough to uh to hurt it or, or, or slow it down at least. It is not happy. Would it be helpful to help Larry? It's totally your call. Yell across the ship to me. What are you thinking? Well, I'm mean? thinking since we're blessed, we should be doing the attack and you should go save tw- number 26 if you can. Yeah, he's, he's, I second that. He's on one. He needs it. Can you turn into a bear? No, so I can do <laughs> poison spray, a cone of cold. Can my poison spray get two people at once? No, I think you're, you're ice though. I think you're ice dagger. The target and each creature within five feet of it must succeed it or, t- or take 2d6, yeah. I can fire at both of them? Yep. Okay, I'll do that. Which is what, hit DC? Yeah, and so then that's your two slots. That's your last spell until a short rest. Oh, so then, I'm gonna take a nap, enjoy the battle. <gasps> uh, uh, so right. then, oh, uh, sixteen. So you see the turtle kind of shape some water out of her hand, and then she snaps her fingers, and it turns into a huge icy spear, and she throws it too. And uh, let's see, click that damage. So the first one you hit takes the eight damage, and then also you need they need to do dexterity saves. Five and seven. Mm-hmm. So the ice dagger goes through the neck of one of them, and then it just shatters into ice into his friend, and they both hit the ground. You've killed them both. And when you kill. see them, yeah. <laughs> you see. And we are uh, at the top of the order, uh, and that would be Milwaukee. Okay, great. I'm going after Big Boomer. I'm gonna do a Goring Rush. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that twenty. <laughs> Nice! All right, if killer combat between a minotaur and a robot is what you've been craving, (laughs) don't touch that dial. Well, uh, you did the Gordon Rush, right? Right, right, right. So you would have knocked him right off. That's off the ship? Yeah. No, 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 that's not gonna work. Man. You can go, give me me a dexterity check. Okay, okay. I'll hold you up. Take my hand. 
As you hit him, you realize what you've just done. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Damn it. Hey, what would you get? Four. It's a four. But you had four to it because she blessed you. <gasps> so it's a uh, eight. Well, it's, well, wait, no, that's how that I have to add. Yeah. D4, D4, right. It's a three. <laughs> the seven. seven. Ooh. No. 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 You know what? I'm going to say he falls off yeah. right here. Uh huh. <gasps> okay, 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 okay. But he's dead? No, he's not dead. You go ahead and finish your damage. Uh, but uh, but he's, he's, he's off and he's kind of like hanging on that, that, that spear there. I mean, he doesn't have yeah. a lot of dexterity himself, so he's, right. he's kind of like, what the F happened? It's actually kind of hard to tell if he's hanging on to it or if he's just caught on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Nard. now it's Nart. Hmm. Nart. Nart. What Nart do? Does Nart want fingy? Nart wants fingies. So Nart gun move to edge. What, what do I see when I get to the edge there? Is he kind of like flailing? Yeah, you, I mean, as much as a robot can, he's sort of caught like on his chest. He's sort of caught like kind of clinging to the side of the ship. You know those toys, like the little dog, robot dogs that like go, ar, 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 and yeah. they fall yeah. over and their arms just kind of like go like that. Only he can't even get the chance. Uh, yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, can I roll a strength to see if I can get him back up onto the ship? Yeah, yeah, that's you're, a you're straight up saving check, him. Yeah. yeah. Can you? Oh, let's go. That twenty. Oh. All right. So that's how do you want to do this? What is, what's your plan? Here? I kind of want to grab him by the arm and then slam him down on the deck. Nice. Like, like, yeah, and mm -hmm. see if anything jars loose. All right. Maybe, well, with the nat twenty, get... you you grab that arm and pull as hard as you can, and it's just gonna pop right off. Oh, <laughs> great. Not good. A bunch of steam comes like spewing out of like the arm socket a little bit, and you feel your clothes get slightly wrinkled, but the, the arm comes off clean. Nice. You know, and you've got yeah. the arm in your hand, and uh, I mean, geez, that would that might finish Boomer off. He's pretty helpless. Yeah. Can I like <laughs> nudge his head and like push him off? Yeah. <laughs> with a nat 20? Yeah, with a nat 20, we will say that when that, that the, you know, when you snap something, the other half is going to, to silence, and Boomer says bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Boomer. Hi, then. Oh, the haunted man. What's it gonna be? I I'll go and attack that wee pirate. Get him this guy there. here. Yeah, yeah. 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 at the top of the stairs. The one that tried to get Larry. Yeah. Uh, with with what? I'll do Eldritch Blast. You got some range on there, so standing by here with your friends and yeah. sending your tendrils over there, and then your your roll to hit is. Oh. Thirteen. Total. Thirteen. Oh, I thought that was a one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll hit, uh, and then do the damage. Damage of ten. Oof. Yeah, right. that does it real well. I mean, this pirate, like, he takes it right in the chest. Yeah, you know, the and shadows you just see, just... yeah, there's this necrotic, like, spread all yeah. over him. He's just he trying just, to put it out. Yeah. And he falls down, and he, he he's not dead, but he is screaming. You're up, number 26. Okay, so I have two potions. Both are useless to me right now. All I can really do is ask for help. Or you can run. Little boy! <laughs> little boy, little boy, little boy. Will you have a bow as well, right? Yeah, so you can run 30 feet, yeah. but I have one hit point. Yeah, so you gotta run, go back down, down the stairs yeah, and get, get behind the, the thing. Yeah. I go back up to little boy. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna run back to little boy? Yeah. Little boy! Little boy, little boy, <laughs> what can I have wrong? I have good medicine. Not without like components and potions and oh. stuff like that. You wouldn't, mm -hmm. you would know how to, to mend things. Am I still holding that by the way? The, no, the moonshine. Yeah, you still got that moonshine. Mm -hmm. You got no, it. Have that, you been yeah. drinking it? That you got a robot arm too. I don't know if you've been drinking <laughs> it. <laughs> I say, little boy, I'll trade you a white potion for a little bit of healing. It's a good deal. Oh, well, I'll just give you a healing. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> and now we are at Nars, and you're all on the lower deck. He cannot see any of these guys hand on his on the wheel, so he's just kind of a, readying a, a shot for whoever comes over that. Brick's turn. All right, so Brick will, um, how tall are you? <laughs> I'm average, right? <laughs> I, I yeah. would assume that. Well, I'm not yeah. Sure. No, I'm like yeah, you're mean, like five between, ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah five uh, seven five ten. I like Same the blood. my dating I, profile. I like the, I like the blood <laughs> squirting out of your neck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so Brick will reach up and try to cover your spurting wounds and cast cure wounds on you. Oh, thank you. Oh, you so go. that's gonna be a D8 plus oh, seven. What is that correct? That's a lot of hit points. 
Five plus seven. Okay, nice. nice. You are touched by magical, soft. Whoa! <laughs> so magically soft. Hey, yeah. guys! Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah, you nice. feel great. You smell lavender. Yeah. Do you then add? You. So it's, wow, it's Rattle awesome. Bone's turn, and you see as he kind of has finished his incantation, and the bones on that chip have, have formed into a uh, skeleton, uh, walking, talking skeletons. They're alive! They're alive! And it's uh, the princess's turn. All right. Should I just kind of puncture something like this? It's a skeleton. They're magical. I mean, it's, it's animated bones. It's like just an animated skeleton. Okay, there's no like magical force around them. Okay, so I just need to crush it. So your, I have my, your my staff. Well, you got only one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, you're only gonna get about here. Where am I gonna get to? Okay. Right at the, right at the top okay, of the so Is it a chuck and spear? <laughs> yeah, you wanna throw your staff? You can throw your staff, sure. Do I have aim? It would be a dexterity check, right? Yeah. Or a dexterity. I don't have so much dexterity. Do you cast okay. spells through your staff? Well, I can do poison spray. <laughs> if you throw it, you might not be able to cast spells out of it. Well, no, it's not her staff, is no. her, uh, it's her, her, her necklace it's is her, yeah, yeah, it's is, my, is, okay. is what she uses for her, mm-hmm. her sea magic. So I can do... But you can do your poison spray, right? And that, that's a cantrip, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you can you can do that for sure. That's what we're gonna do. So he just has to do a constitution Okay, roll. so I don't do anything. No, you just see what he, what he does. 14. Oh. He only takes half of this, and so he it's weak, though. takes, you know, two damage. He's spray a little acid on uh, on one of these skeletons. Can we take control of these spears? Turn them inward? Uh, uh, give it a shot. Can I DM's throwing out there now that I've already done my turn? Mm-hmm. It's top of the order. Okay, Should I move order. back? I'm gonna walk no, out. I'll stay there. Mm-hmm. That was your fault. You yeah, can I probably so. get up here. Yeah. Like, people with, uh... Try to get on that thing. Get on the spear. Can I get to the spear? Let's see if You can, yeah, you, this harpoon gun. You turn the harpoon and try to twist it over to aim at oh, Gnarl. Sick. You saw these things come down. I mean, these are telephone poles on this thing. So do a strength roll. One Milwaukee. Oh! Yeah. Hello. So absolutely, you, you spin this thing at, at them, and I mean, uh, it's a lever. You've aimed it where? At right, the, right at those skeletons? Skeletons? Uh, or, no, he was going for out? Okay, now let me just think about this. Uh, if I aim it at Gnarl, I might hit the steering wheel, which might just like send us down. What about the master of the guys? The oh, guy. shoot. The yeah, rattle bombs. Yeah, rattle rattle bombs. Bombs. He's, he's farther enough away oh, from the steering wheel. He's right on the, no, he's not on it. Yeah, guys, I don't know. Maybe yeah, I mean, these things are thick. I'm saying these things... This yeah, they is, take up the is... whole five. All right, let me aim for the skelly boy. That... Do the one that's that's more often try not to, to aim hit... it towards the fan. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll have a fan. All right, I'm going to aim it for that guy. And I really want to spell this out. This, this this thing's huge. You're aiming it, you're turning it off of the ledge so that it's on. The mm-hmm. So you're, you're pointing it, I mean, down. Yeah. Okay, this is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know do that it's... This is... Not Should if I we... do this? Narte, shoot. <laughs> Narte, so we're just saying, shoot, Narte, shoot! <laughs> I mean, they can't kill us all off in the first episode, right? So, yeah. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Let's shoot, uh, let's shoot that first bones guy. All right, so you pull the lever, you just hear, boom, boom. <laughs> And you shoot a telephone pole-sized spear into the skeleton on the deck. Does he die, though? It dies. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it dies. They both die. Oh, uh, yeah. And this uh, entire part of the ship is ripped oh, in half. Mm-hmm. I mean, it is open. I, want, I need Princess to do a dexterity oh, check. Shit. Oh, oh shit. Are the fans still Throw working? Me the or do we, we'll get to that in a second. Come on, Princess. Ten. All right, minus one, nine. A okay. nine dexterity check? We saw that featherweight. Who's pl- you're not too far. Can you throw me the I'll thing? I'll toss it. I have I a dexterity off. of 17. I don't know how high. I mean, we're in the clouds, though. I don't know if 60 feet. Here's the issue, guys. You just fired a giant telephone pole like across the bu- across the l- the width of the ship. Okay. It, you said we could. Yeah, I did say you could. I, I, you'll find that I rarely say you can't. Uh, you didn't say we should. Yeah, I didn't say it was a good idea. Just like Kyle said, it, it like it rips the oh, ship yeah, a new one. I also yeah. want you to to see the the direction you shot it at. Yeah, right through here. Right oh, there. Right, right here. here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Okay. And again, the problem with these big turbine edges is that from the top, it's <laughs> sucking air. Yeah. In. Okay. So as soon as this telephone pole like shreds the ship, knocks you prone, and just 
completely obliterates these two skeletons. It gets sucked right into this wind turbine, and there's yet another huge explosion as this yeah, wind turbine. You're all going to need to do a dexterity <laughs> check right now. Because the whole ship over. is going I'm, crazy. I do another one. <laughs> I'm sorry, you already did one? I did one, yeah. I'm not going to give her any damage because she's got that shell. I got a 17. So yeah. Okay, well, you stood up very gracefully. Great. I yeah. got 17. No, okay. Okay. 14. 14. I did a three. A three. And Nart did a nat one. No, Nart. Nart, like, falls off the ship. (laughs) (laughs) You know what, Nart, though? uh, What you got going for you is that it is shifting the other way. Yeah, yeah. 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 so you're going to... You're you're you you're gonna take uh, what we were saying two dam- two points of damage. Yeah. If, if under a ten, you take two points of damage. Yeah, and you're gonna be knocked prone, which means that you'll have to use one of your actions in the next round of combat to get on your feet. So I want to say the same thing happens to Milwaukee here. You know, yeah. and again, you're really lucky that the ship didn't pitch the other way. Uh, you guys were. I also want to yeah. point out that he killed two people. Yeah. Yeah. That's so nice. I think. Yeah. 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 Thanks, guys. yeah. I mean, yeah. He got he got rid of the skeleton. Maybe he's like Milwaukee. Yeah. But also, who knows what happened to the to the skull. Bones and the captain. They yeah, might they're, fly they're, right off. Are they rolling for dexterity? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they absolutely. Yeah, let's see where they're at. <laughs> the captain rolled a one. No. Nice. Nice. Um, so as the ship tilts this here. way, uh, the captain definitely slides, drops his weapon, is prone as well, and, and slides all, all the way over here. He's not off the ship, but he's he's on the ground. Rattle blows a road of fifteen, so he kind of he's grabs okay. the 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 helm. Mm-hmm. So we got we're at Nar. Can I? So Nar, you do a dexterity check for me. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry, a uh, stealth check. Not roll 18. Nice. 18. So during the uh, explosion, uh, you know, everyone kind of stumbled and grabbed the side of the ship. And Ivan, you remember Nart standing right next to you, and he, but he, then he slid. And uh, to, to all of your knowledge, he's he's gone. Oh. Nart? Nart, Nart. yeah, he's gone. What he rolled? To all of our knowledge, he's gone. Yeah, and it is uh, uh, Ivan's turn. Where did Nart go? All right, I'm gonna move forward. And then my Eldridge Blast is 120 feet. I can go for the captain who's... Who's kind of knocked on his butt over yeah. here. Yeah. 24. Ooh. Perfect. Then uh, the damage? Two. <laughs> you see the captain go, ow! <laughs> <laughs> that stung. <laughs> Uh, but it does keep him from getting about his feet. It does. So he's still he's still prone, and you have hit him for two points of damage. We got 26, though. All right, I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want to shoot Bonesies with my short bow, and that's 80 foot range. So I'll move like I'll move above so I get a good vantage point, like straight shot. 11, 15 total. Yeah, that'll hit him. Yeah. Nice. And uh, damage. And uh, damage. Seven total. Yeah, so you your arrow finds its mark, you know, and any other creature in the world would scream or yelp or make some vocal sound when he gets hit with an arrow like that, but the rattle bones does not. Kind of just looks. You guys have found out that that doesn't work. (laughs) He's focused on you now. Um, Made a horrible mistake. (laughs) But he's holding on to the wheel, but you can tell just by his body language that like he's contemplating his next move. Like he could bolt at any second. I think he bolts. Yeah, I think he saw that huge pole. Cut through uh, there, you know. (laughs) You see Rattlebone start to just like take off, like, you know, down these stairs. He he runs past the captain. The captain like reaches up to like take his, like, pick, give me a hand. And Rattlebone just kind of pushes him out of the way and just like runs down the stairs and disappears on the other side of this this boathouse. Anybody that is standing on top here near the wheel can see that Rattlebones like goes down the stairs and takes a quick U-turn and goes right into a door. And uh, it's uh, Brick's turn. Mm-hmm. All right, so the first thing Brick is gonna do is he's gonna turn towards his party and yell, don't kill the captain yet. I want to know why. <laughs> why are we here? And then he charges forward <laughs> and jumps off the ledge of there that's five feet in front of him. Uh-huh. His little angel wings come out. But they don't actually work until third level, so he's just gonna fall to the ground. <laughs> that's the cutest thing we ever seen. We all stopped the battle and took out. Oh. It's true, yeah. Everybody was like, oh. Takes us allowance. Yeah, we had such high hopes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, something. 
And, and there, there, Brick. Yeah. Okay, I'm a strong boy! <laughs> and he uses the rest of his movement to go, up go as far as he can forward towards the captain. Mm -hmm. I'll probably be like yeah. here. Yeah, you got this huge hole here, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, gonna definitely skirt around the gaping hole inside of the ship. Yeah. And then he's gonna cast Sacred Flame, which has a range of 60 feet. So Great. it's a deck saving throw. Oh, okay. Okay. Six. Doesn't say. Yeah, so okay. how much damage? So that's a 1d8 radiant damage. What Seven. Seven radiant damage. All right, so that hurt. Yeah. Ow. And that one hurt. You guys notice that, like, even damaged, even even just getting, like, jacked by brick there, like, the, the captain's still trying to, like, crawl his way back to the wheel. Because mm -hmm. the wheel is just, like, it's just back and forth. You can see that on the back of the ship, because almost everybody, yeah, except for Larry, is at the is at the high deck here, the high main deck. Uh, you can see the engine in the back of the ship, and it is belching flame and smoke. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can't see, you can't see where Crickle is, like, where the no that was sent up there to fix it is, but you can see that, you know, this engine is clearly overheated, it is clearly damaged, and it is just like making the whole most horrible like iron screams you've heard. And at that point you hear another just loud whoa parts fly the everywhere. The biggest explosion you've heard yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And out of the smoke comes Crickle. He sees all of you, he sees Larry, and he's, he can't believe you guys are out. And he's like, what happened? And Larry's like, we got out. He's like, I I didn't think you'd get out. I I just wanted to. Get, I, I sabotaged the engine. You the, know the captain hears this and he's like, "You did what, you little stone humper? I wanted to kill you. What?" Crackle runs and and, and tackles the captain off of this and just no, and no, no. starts punching him in the face. Ow! Urgh. Get this guy off me! Get him off of me! So I first is I just want you guys to resolve. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna go pull off Crackle. All right, so you okay. pull off Crackle and yes. the captain. He, he looks at you and Larry kind of looks at you guys and they essentially all know this thing is going down. They've got good. about 10 minutes because you're, you're super high. We don't know where Nard is. We don't know where Nard is. We'll deal with that in a second. <laughs> okay, I'll just put in a second. Like, Nard would like to know if he made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nard's stealth check was uh, successful. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna we're going to freeze you. The captain does, he does tell you, since you're the one that pulled him off, he, he looks at you and says, hey, no one else is close yet. He goes, I got him. I got a dinghy. I got a sky dinghy. <laughs> I can get us off. You, me and you, let's, let's go. Uh, I, I, I can fit another one in there. I can fly us out. It's an escape pod, essentially. Uh, it's it's a small ship, a dinghy is a, a ship. It's just, I, I can only fit one other person in there. I can drive it. It didn't, it's hidden in my cat quarters. Let's move, let's move. After this next explosion happens, you all need to make a decision. You all know what's going on in mm -hmm. this ship. You've been seeing your options. You saw what was underneath the carriage. You saw where Rattlebones went. You saw what the captain wants to do. You know the engine is effed. You're all gonna write down to yourselves what to do. But you really only have time for one of those things, and you, you've gotta choose what your character would like to do. So when you do that, just rip that piece of paper off and give it to us. And we will begin with Nart. He disappeared uh, into his, his sneaky cloak, and Nart is standing in front of the uh, the metal door with the robot arm. Back in the prison. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and Nart, you are shaking. You hear all these explosions. You're shaking back and forth. Mm -hmm. And what do you do? I stick hand in the door and turn it all the way around. You mm -hmm. yeah, you turn it around and the door swings open. And ooh, so much glorious treasure, Nart. Oh, like, I mean, Nart tried to take all he can. So, uh, <laughs> so Nart steps in the room, and as soon as you step in the room, Nart, another explosion hits. You get thrown into the treasure, and as you look behind, you see Sky. The entire half of that ship is now like just like separated. It's, just it's, like it's separating, off. and it's not the jail part. It's just the treasure room part. You came here for treasure. Not gonna grab him a treasure. You see in your reach a a large circular thing in a blanket. You see a large cylinder thing wrapped in, with a hilt, obviously uh, a sword. You also see a of uh, the bag that he brought in there, a sack about about this big. Of those three things, I get to pick one. You yeah, you grab, have, you you have, have time, time to grab, grab one. one. I'm gonna grab the bag I saw him bring in. You grab the bag, you open it up, you see a shiny ring. It's a very pretty ring. You look at the ring as you've kind of like 
lean back and start kind of just spinning in the air. And you're just looking at the ring as you free fall. As you plummet into the abyss. We, like see, we see a brick uh, dart towards back towards the uh, the prison area. Brick yells to the displacer beast, I'm coming to help you! I'm coming! And he'll try to do anything he can to rattle this cage open. I'm yeah. hoping that it's maybe been blasted. And behind you is coming to, to help you. You see number 26 has decided to come right yeah, behind you. And Tortuga, they're you kind of like call out to them, but you call out to Milwaukee too, but Milwaukee doesn't seem like he's coming. What, what do you do? First, I'm like, we need to stick together. I want to, I want, I want to stay with you because so far you've helped the most people. And so, I, but I also want Milwaukee because he's strong. And if we stick together, I think we can get through this. He's out of ear range and you see them moving. You kind of go to move with them. It's one or the other. I'm going to go get Milwaukee. You guys stay here. You go with Milwaukee. Okay. And uh, you two head down into there. Yeah, the cage at this point is open. The beast is death throws. Yeah, yeah like this This beast is... <laughs> and it is yeah. uh, for sure in labor. Yes. Uh, the baby is coming. And, um, Why? Any second now. Why? Why do you do this to us? <laughs> A little boy, do the magic on the Deliver. Thing. Deliver the babies. Oh, deliver. Well, <laughs> you just said the liver. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will, I will say, yeah, as you get close, it's the two tendrils on its back kind of come up. It doesn't know kind of what you mean. Yeah, it doesn't really know like how to like deal with you. It's going to defend itself as best it can. I am sorry. I can't heal you anymore because I already healed other people. But you, I want you to live because you deserve to live as much as everybody else. I only have my pan of chocolate. <laughs> and the beast sees you two not kind of approaching it harsh, and it kind of lowers its tendrils and lets you get near it. Um, How can I help? What do you guys, the two of you are there, what, what, what's the plan here? This baby's coming any second now. Do you know how to deliver babies? You just stand there and catch it. So let's just go. <laughs> 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 so I, since there's two of you here, I want you to both roll a medicine check with advantage. Oh, nice. okay. so what is that? D20? Two, two. D20s. Mm -hmm. Take the highest one. 19. 18. Oh, okay. 18, 18 and 19. Nice. All right, so nice. you both approach it, and number 26 kind of grabs, he has the height, and grabs the, the tendrils that are kind of swinging back. Rick kind of just stands there. With chocolate smeared on his hands. <laughs> <laughs> the beast is calm enough to see that you guys are there to help kind of gives one last breath. Yeah. The mother kind of goes to sleep. Yeah. With a, with a And out rolls a albino white displacer plate beast kitten. It's completely white. About three pounds. Uh, and <laughs> Got six feet, two little like sharp spiky tendrils. Yeah. And you're holding it, and as you uh, as you hold it, the side of the ship rips open. You both are sucked out the side, what? and now what do you do? We're Where's that side. potion? Are we, he I, has I'm it. grabbing on, so we're holding on. I'm taking out the potion and be like, <laughs> and we're sharing. I'm like pouring it in the mouth and taking it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're 60 I'm feet. I feel like you're at skydiving height. Yeah. I'm holding on to this kitten as tight as I can, crying happy and terrified tears at the same time, and also looking for Nart. I don't know, I want to call you Krug for some reason. <laughs> Nart answered to Krug. Looking <laughs> <laughs> for Nart and see if we can catch him in our feather fall. So, Nart is not in your distance yeah. at all. He oh. fell before you guys even got down there. No, uh, we're just rolling in a can of right. free fall now, she, now, her hands are on this tiger. Uh, and I'm around. You hold on to her and you're falling and your plan is, is working then you, as you guys are falling in the sky, uh, Britt, you spot something you've seen before, and it's a golden bird. <gasps> and, Cheerio! And it's flying right <laughs> towards you. And this bird lands right into your chest and goes into you. What? It disappears into you, and your wings grow the size <gasps> of... Uh, an albatross. They yeah, grow they're huge, huge, they get huge wings. I yeah. knew I could fly! And you start That's flying so with ease, but what you didn't know is they knocked off uh -oh. 420. Boy. <laughs> 
26. Uh, who, with the gust of wind, uh, he he goes spinning uh, the other direction. But you and this kitten are losing speed. But you 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 below you you see an island. You know Cheerios helping you right now, and you know these are Cheerios wings. Okay. He's leading you down to the island with the kitten. Going towards the island. Yes. Yeah. And uh, oh, that's what our friend has, has has spun off into the air. We we lost Nart a while ago, and now we have. Uh, if you want to take uh, him and the captain. Sure. Here. You're yeah. going to follow the captain. Both of them. Oh, you, both of you guys are going to follow I the captain. I went to get Milwaukee. When Milwaukee's having a conversation with I the captain. I don't know about All that. All right. Well, the captain is like, follow me, boys. I'll take you down to my quarters, and and, and, and we'll get we'll get in my captain's diggy. No pun intended. And, and and we'll get out of here alive. <laughs> Um, and um, we also see our friend Ivan is he, hey he's gone around this other way and has has gone down into the quarters as well. When you get down into the quarters, the captain opens the door and he pushes in, and it's just a short hallway with like some nasty little carpet on it. There's a door to the right, and he's like, "Here's me quarters right here, right in here." And he like busts through the door, busts into the room. He's barely waiting for you, but you know he expects you to follow. Him. Ivan had moved in before that, mm-hmm. and he had chased Rattlebones into. There and uh, so I don't want you to do a perception check. I've been I do like yeah. followed what's his you name? Know, oh, that's uh, right, Rattlebones. Yeah, Rattlebones. Right. 17. Nice. So you go to follow Rattlebones, you turn the corner, and Rattlebones jumps out of the darkness with his dagger right at you, but you're able to grab his hand. And in your head, you hear your friend, who you've come to know as Mr. Black, he says, Burn him! Well, I'm gonna do that. Mm. Then I'll do burning hands. All right, I'll roll that. You see the green fire come out of you as you put your hand on his chest, and it does start to burn him. He does screech, and you know that this does absolutely hurt him. And out of his hands falls a glowing green book that he's been holding on to. He kind of steps back, and you, you're still kind of standing there. And down and grab the book. And as you grab the book, these guys come running in with the captain. The captain has darted into uh, into his quarters. It's a small room and he pushes like a little end table out of the way and he takes a little key from his belt and he puts it in this slot in the wall. And you, just, you know, also you happen to notice that there are even more paintings of him. And, uh, they're semi-nudes. Uh, they're not exactly tasteful. Um, <laughs> and, 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 yeah, and, and he's like, eyes up here. Can I take um, a selfie and, with one? Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and he like, he puts this, he fits this key into like this hole that you never would even been noticed and he like turns the key and like a, you know the wall like slides out of the way and you can see like a little ladder going down into like an open bay area where there's a small boat there it looks like it'll only fit two people and Narl turns around and is like hey, hey, hey I, when I, I said that I could get you you off the ship <laughs> I'm also planning on leaving uh, yeah gotcha uh, at this moment I'd like to Take hold, gnarl. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, throw him in the other direction. Uh huh. Right, so okay. we're gonna roll a, a strength contest here. Great. <laughs> Between a minotaur and a gnome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm gonna guess he has advantage. Yeah. 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 We're gonna give you a advantage. You have advantage. Oh, oh right. Shoot. That was a seven. You roll a ten. Oh. oh! And then a 20. Yeah. Uh, a natural 20? Yes. All right, so you, yeah, you slap. <laughs> <laughs> Not so close! <laughs> <laughs> and Larry comes in at this point, and then, and now the captain has already pulled the lever and revealed this small little staircase that goes, and you see this this dinghy. And it, he's telling the truth. Mm-hmm. About yeah. two people can fit in there. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you right now, the 400-pound turtle is not going to fit. Uh, <laughs> I just uh, lost weight for my party. I don't know why. <laughs> I think you look great. Uh, the Minotaur is going to be a squeeze as well, but you might make it in there. Uh, and now Larry has come across. She says, I can drive this thing. I- I'd like to live. We're all going to stick together. We're all going to get in this thing, even if we have to sit on each other's shoulders. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you sure? What, what, we have to. I, what other options do we have? Well, you have your shell. You could just hide in it. <laughs> you know, you might make it. Can I use a history or intelligence to see if the book is offers any help in this moment? Yeah, you can do an uh, uh, an arcana check. Mm-hmm. Eight. 
So the book doesn't really say anything to you, but your dark passenger gives you a little advice and he says, hold on to your balls, kid. <laughs> and a huge explosion uh, happens. You are sucked out of the side of the ship and, and start spinning. You guys have, see that this side of the ship is gone. Rattlebones has also gone spinning. You've, you've got the book with you. But you do go tumbling out. Um, this this okay. level of the ship is de- totally depressurized Save now. Me. It's jumping the stingy or nothing. OK, you two jump in. I. I I have a strong shelf. I believe in you. Okay, Larry, let's go. Let's go. You're gonna take Larry. Yeah. <laughs> So you jump and you you tuck in your shell and just start heading to the ground like a comet. You two get in the ship. Larry kind of clinks it. You guys start flying down. And it's got kind of a parafoil on it that he can like kind of like steer it. Two things happen in the sky as you guys are spinning. Brick, you're you're floating kind of not out of control with your kitten, and you do see uh, someone spinning towards you, and it's Ivan. <gasps> Uh, Brick! <laughs> Brick! <laughs> Save me! I've got the book! I know it's really good something! Shit, Brick covers the kitten's ears. It's okay, he's not that loud all the time. <laughs> okay! And he kind of, he, he tries to get his wings to kind of whoosh out so they're kind of more like a, like a glider and they make him fall less quickly so you can catch Ivan. Uh, Alright, so he's kind of aim yeah, towards, hang glide, hang glide towards towards Ivan, and then so Ivan, what are you, you're kind of swimming towards in the air. Yeah. Toward, <laughs> doing my best to. So Ivan, you do uh, get into an arm's length, and let's uh, let's do an uh, athletics. 16. 16. Oh, perfect. So yeah, you shoot out your arm and you are able to catch her little leg. It's gonna give you a little tug, but those wings are, are they, they kind of absorb some of the thing. He's holding on to your little leg as you guys- Thank you, Brick! <laughs> Glide down. You then, feel those wings tense on you a little bit. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's starting to feel a little turbulent as your legs spiraling toward the island. There's <laughs> land! And, uh, and now as the dinghy that you and Larry, Larry's got it figured out and he's heading it towards and he sees the island and he's like, that's the only land I see, I'm going for that. And so you guys are kind of this tiny little airship, that little two-man airship you're in. He's like, stop breathing on me. <laughs> else me to breathe. <laughs> and, uh, and then you hear Larry go, what the hell is that? And on your windshield slaps the face of uh, Nart. <laughs> what? Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys start cruising uh, towards the island. And that will end episode one of Reckless Roleplay. We're all floating. I'm floating. You're floating by yourself. Yeah. I'm floating. You're all free falling. Yeah. yeah, you're all free falling. Oh. Great job, guys. Oh. Great job. Cliffhanger. I mean, the ship.